The purpose of this video is to introduce the concept of the system state. So conceptually speaking, a system state is its memory or another way of putting that it's the information that you need to know in order to figure out what the system's going to do in the future so um, more mathematically speaking uh, the system state is the information at a time t sub 0 that if you have this information and you also have the input for uh, all values of time that are, are greater than or equal to t0 so basically you know the state at time t0 and you know the input um, for uh, the uh, system at times larger than t0 then you can compute the state for values of t greater than t0 and you can compute the output okay so um, again the basic idea is if I know the the state at uh, any time t0 and I know the input for all values of time greater than t0 then I can compute the state for any time greater than t0 and I can compute the output for any time greater than t0 so this um, in some sense is sort of a circular definition but uh, again the concept here the important idea is that state represents information if I have a system that's um, described in terms of a differential equation um, I might uh, you know for example I have some y prime of t plus a y of t is equal to x of t this is a very simple differential equation the state of the system that's described by a differential equation is the value of y in this case it's the value of y at t0 um, so this would be well this is actually the state at t0 okay more generally if I've got a, a system that's described by a differential equation then the state is um, indicated uh, by the variables that I need to have the initial conditions for so that's one way to recognize what your state variables are um, if uh, you have something where you you're solving a differential equation and you need to have initial conditions for certain values typically y and its derivatives then those are your state variables okay um, if you are uh, creating say a model in Simulink and you have integrators in that model the output of an integrator is a state variable so that's another way of determining when you have a state variable and it turns out that integrators um, when you're using them to implement differential equations which is typically when you use them um, in Simulink you would specify the initial condition for the state variable as part of the integrator uh, there's an initial value box that you can set on the integrator um, so how do I determine uh, what components or elements of a system are likely to uh, be uh, state variables well one way to look at this is um, again since we think of state as memory if I have an electrical system
so I have a circuit of some kind. Then uh, state variables are capacitor voltage, and uh, inductor current. If you'll remember from your circuits, assuming you've had circuits, uh, neither a capacitor voltage or an inductor current can change instantaneously. So in that sense, they, they represent a memory element in a, in a circuit. And so the capacitor voltage and the inductor current are uh, state variables. And so this is one way that you can identify state variables in an electrical system. In a mechanical system, um, typically state variables are things like position, uh, velocity, uh, angular position, if I'm talking about something that's rotating, and angular velocity. So um, again, uh, position and velocity as well as angular position, angular velocity, these are things that in a real physical system, if you're talking about objects with mass, uh, these can't uh, change instantaneously. So I can't, have a, I, I can't have an object that's at position 0 and then all of a sudden jumps to position 1 without going between the, all the intervening positions. It just doesn't work, uh, you know, except in Star Trek. So, um, again, you can see that position and velocity, these are things that have memory. Uh, there are things that don't change instantaneously. So, um, this pretty much concludes what we need to say about system state, except for one thing. Uh, quite often, in an electrical circuit, for example, uh, I may be interested, or I may actually develop a differential equation in terms of variables that are not capacitor voltages or inductor currents. Uh, but uh, these uh, quantities that I develop a differential equation in terms of will be linear combinations of voltage, uh, induct capacitor voltage or inductor currents. And so um, quite often the differential equation, what we would get in terms of state variables by looking at its initial conditions, are not the same as the uh, state variables we would choose by just looking at the physical system. But it turns out that they're linearly related. Given the set of state variables that I come up by looking at just the system, I should be able to do a linear transform on those variables to um, come up with the other state variables that I'm using, say the ones that I get from a differential equation. And the same is true for mechanical systems. So again, that's a brief introduction to system state. The reason why I care what a system state is, is again if I'm implementing something in Simulink, then I need to uh, be able to know uh, what variables have memory. Typically these will be coming out of integrators. Um, later, well, uh, depending on how far you get into uh, signals and systems, you may actually start looking at something or at systems in terms of state space analysis. Uh, this is a very powerful technique. Um, it has a lot of uses in time domain uh, filtering and so on, uh, common filtering, uh, control systems. And in that case, you actually describe the system explicitly in terms of its state variables. So this concludes the video on system state.